So we really had a great time going down to Hannibal. Took a lot of stuff back, really learned quite a bit, and it was great to meet a lot of like-minded people and, and meet a lot of the viewers here. In that process, coming home, I ended up losing my Swiss Army knife. I cannot find this thing. I know I had it on the way home, and I've gone through the car, I've gone through all my luggage. I just don't know what happened. I don't know if it was sitting in my lap, and it fell out when we stopped somewhere, or, or what it is. And this is something I use every single day. I'm sure a lot of people can relate. Say you leave your, your cell phone, your keys, maybe you're someone just like myself, you leave your pocket knife. It, I just feel, I guess, naked. I don't know a better way to describe it. I just feel so lost without the thing. It's something I use every day. I've even tried to go back and find, I have a couple extra backup ones I know that have broken blades on stuff, but I, I can't find those. And I'm, unfortunately, I'm gonna have to run down to the store today and go get a replacement. <laughs> Potato beetle on me. I have bugs all over me. Yeah. So we've been going through and harvesting our potatoes, and this year we really struggle with potato, uh, like Colorado potato bugs, a couple other varieties. We'll go out, clean things up. I should, more I should say, my wife goes out, cleans things up. We come back out the next day, and they're just covered all over again. Just been this ongoing battle. I don't know if it's the year or what. We also did put down hay this year, something a little bit different, and I kind of wonder if they're going down and hiding in that area, and then coming back out. So we're gonna do a couple things here at the end of this year and see if this really helps us for next year. The first thing we're gonna do is all the potato plants, normally we throw those into the compost, they compost over the next year. And theoretically, if they get above 170 degrees, I would assume that would kill those, um, but I'm not sure. So we're gonna end up trying to just burn that stuff this fall. And the other thing we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here, we're gonna harvest our onions, and we're gonna have this nice big open area here, and we're just gonna let the chickens sit in here for several days, and hopefully they can clean up any actual potato beetles or any eggs that they might potentially find and reduce the population for next year. So we'll see how that works out. But it's not even a potato plant. I have to say one thing I do like about this hay, and by the way I'm doing this roll right here that was the one that we had cut and didn't actually let cure over at all. And I haven't really noticed any performance difference at all. But one thing I really have liked about this hay is we haven't had to go back in here and recover the potatoes. The hay has just done a pretty good job covering stuff up where normally when we plant it directly into the dirt, we have to come back in here and add more um, dirt every so often to make sure these things covered up because if they turn green and they become poisonous. So, and yeah, you can cut the, cut some of that stuff off. It's only in select spots, but pretty, um, worked out pretty good for that. That's a heck of a red potato there. So potatoes are pretty much harvested here. Not our best bounty ever, but not bad. We ended up actually cutting back on the potatoes that we planned this year and tried ramping up our sweet potatoes just because there's a lot more nutritional value in a sweet potato. But um, it is what it is. I guess uh, we'll see how the sweet potatoes go, but they definitely aren't looking as good as they did last year. So it makes me a little worried, but we'll be able to can a bunch of these. We'll set some of these whole aside that we'll eat earlier in the, the fall and the winter time. But um, and now on to the onions. Diesel, not too flammable. Even right in the bottom of the wheelbarrow. Sitting right here on my glove. It's like another little potato bug right there. When we planted our sweet corn, the very first rolls we planted one weekend, the weekend after we planted another four, 
a couple weeks after that, we plant another eight. The very first row here are really becoming like ripe. They're just perfect right now. So I think this week on our series of homemade Fridays, we're gonna utilize some of this corn and find some recipe to share with you guys. <laughs> I always have to let these things cure. We also planted some sweet onions, so I'm gonna try a little blooming onion with one of these. So we got two different rows of green beans. See how much drier these ones are? It seems like once you stop harvesting them, it starts kicking them into kind of dry out seed mode, uh, which is great, because you, you want these things to, to dry out really nicely, and then you can just easily harvest the seeds out of this. So we'll get next year's seeds, and then uh, maybe a couple more rounds of, of uh, cannon and freezing green beans. So there's only one place that I know that sells the knife that I'm looking for within a reasonable driving distance. I think these Leathermans are really awesome, but they're just too big and bulky for everyday carry. I want more than a single fixed blade, and I don't want something quite this big. I would maybe go with a, a Tinker, but I've really come to enjoy the scissors on these. So this is my knife of choice. Hey. So I usually get the Super Tinker. It's got three rows on this. First is the actual Tinker. It's got an extra hook, and then of course the scissors. You go one step up, which I believe is like the deluxe, just a little too thick for my liking. Not quite as a everyday carry type item, but this seems to be a pretty good happy medium. So this knife's got two blades on it. It's got a smaller one and a larger one. I tend to use the smaller one as my daily use and then I actually keep this larger one a lot of times just so I, I have a really nice sharp blade on there. I also tend to use the screwdrivers a lot on there. There's a Phillips on here as well as a flathead. The scissors is another thing that I've really come to enjoy quite a bit. And then uh, actually the toothpick is another big part of the reason I use this. So it's so nice and shiny right now. We'll see how long that lasts. Are some of the frozen ones that were ready a little bit earlier than a lot of these other ones. Still a lot out there to get picked, but didn't want to just do a little small batch like this. <laughs> so, so a couple of you guys recommended this last year, and we ended up biting the bullet and purchasing one of these. And I'll tell you what, this thing is really nice for dealing with tomatoes. It just speeds things up. You can see it separates all the skins and the seeds. We end up with this nice sauce and we just pour it into a nice stainless steel pan and just start boiling it down to get a lot of our tomato sauce. And this will shrink down quite a bit. We usually boil ours off quite a bit. I think a lot more than most people do. And part of the reason for that is when it actually comes time to cook the meal, like making spaghetti or something, there's a lot less time waiting for this stuff to thicken up. You can use cornstarch. After this, we gotta boil this down and then we'll start on round two.
times you usually run it through just, just one? I just do it two times. Well, I mean, you know, this, just the second time. Then it comes out a lot drier, so if you compare them, you look how wet this is. Going one time through and then how dry it is. I mean, it's not dry dry, but it gets out a lot more. It's a lot. I guess you could say it's been a little busy around here getting back into town trying to get on top of things to get the guard back in order get things out of the garden and start getting them preserved i think we have a little bit of adjustments that we can definitely make um for next year one of those being just trying to get things spaced out on timing wise it seems like we've done a pretty good job the last couple of years but this year feels like a lot of stuff are just just coming ready at, at the same time so you have a bunch of things that you got to hurry up and try to get preserved whether that's canning or wherever the situation is so um, yeah, just a little, little busy around here, I guess you could say. So, special thank you to all you guys that had recommended that tool. We used at the end of the last year, really enjoyed it, and it's been a real treat to use uh, this year as well. It really helped speed up the process of getting tomatoes and all that stuff moving rather quickly and, and turned around. So, hope you guys enjoyed the video, and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye. And now for round two.